art for art's sake has no place in a revolution. We hear that all the time, but then what role does art play? I mean, if artists aren't supposed to hang out, smoke cigarettes, and paint their innermost desires, then what are they supposed to do? And who's gonna tell them? To find some answers, I got in touch with a comrade from Pandai Sining, a mass organization of artists based in the Philippines. The translation of the name Pandai means blacksmith and Sining means art. So it's like, kind of like smithing art or something. Uh, PS is a youth artist collective. Uh, we produce art across five art disciplines, uh, literature, visual arts, multimedia arts, performance art, and music. Uh, we all educate, organize, and mobilize the Filipino youth in order to push forward the National Democratic Program. Uh, we build alternative schools where we teach politics, uh, political economy, culture, arts and literature, among other things. And we regularly conduct art productions where we collectively make art. So to understand the role PS plays in the Philippines, we have to understand a bit of the background context of their revolution. You see, the Philippines is a semi-feudal and semi-colonial country. This means that their revolution is national democratic. PS is a national democratic mass organization. It's absolutely embedded within the ND movement. First, uh, the ND movement or the new, Demo new national democratic movement in the Philippines, basically its program uh, boils down to genuine land reform and national industrialization, kicking out the imperialists who control our country and pushing for self-determination as a nation. The primary contradiction in the Philippines is imperialist oppression. The country has fake independence. It's still a semi-colony of mainly the U.S. So these demands of national industrialization and genuine land reform are part of a national liberation struggle, just like other colonized countries have gone through before them. You can compare it to the Chinese Revolution, which went through a national democratic stage before it could push through a more intense social program. The Filipino people can only do the same when the Yankee boot is off their neck. PS is heavily influenced by the works of Mao Zedong, uh, especially talks at the Yenan Forum. The study of Maoism or earlier Mao Zedong thought in the Philippines began around the early 50s. So PS is built on the strong and often overlooked revolutionary theoretical production of the Philippine and the movement. Uh, we as a movement produced very advanced aesthetic theory, poetics, uh, literary theory, etc., which the local art establishment ignored or worse, diminished. The reason PS has been able to produce advanced theory and cultural production is because it's part of a long revolutionary legacy. Although it was originally founded in the first quarter storm, as our comrade is about to explain, the activists that made that happen were shaped by events in the 60s. This is a line of activism that's unbroken, which is something we often don't have in the imperialist core. We often don't feel the need to truly read and learn about the experiences of the 60s, for example, because we feel like it's some ancient time ago. But in the Philippines, the people who are still around from this time are still active in the struggle. So for Filipino activists to not study their own revolutionary legacy going back decades would not only be reinventing the wheel, but also kind of preposterous. PS was first founded in the first quarter storm. Uh, that was an uprising of Filipino youth in the 1970. Uh, the closest analogy uh, in the West is maybe uh, the May 1968 protests in France. But uh, maybe this is Pinoy pride speaking, but Hours went farther <laughs> than than the French. Uh, as a, uh, the PS then was the performing group of Kabatang Makabayan. Uh, that was 1970 uh, when martial law was declared. Uh, two years after, uh, these mass works were declared illegal, so they went underground. Uh, in 2016, uh, Anakbayan created its cultural arm and named it Pandaisining to honor this history. Uh, PS uh, started with barely more than a dozen activists and were much bigger now. It just takes a handful of truly determined comrades to achieve big things and start a big movement. Something about quality over quantity. Now I introduce PS as a mass organization because it is. And it's also a cultural arm of Anakbayan, which is another mass organization. Mm, we have 
some relative autonomy from anak bayan, but in terms of building up campaigns and planning uh, educational discussions, uh, we kind of work as it as a, as a single org. This strategy of each mass organization having their own cultural arm was something that was theorized and implemented through long struggle. You see, before Pandaisining, there was a different organization called Karatula. Karatula wasn't the cultural arm of Pandaisining, I of Anakbayan. Uh, it was the cultural organization of the entire youth and student sector. Uh, so it had that thing of being an alliance of other cultural organizations. So we founded Pandaisining in order to kind of centralize the cultural organizations of Filipino artists. When revolutionary movements dissolve organizations or switch up their structures, we have to pay close attention. It means that a line struggle occurred which shifted things in their new direction. This can then help inform our situation. So at first, a whole bunch of different mass orgs were all connected to one central cultural organization. Then this group was dissolved and the goal became for each mass organization to start their own cultural arm. With PS having only started in 2016, this hasn't been fully implemented yet. But why did the strategy change? Art plays a crucial role in inspiring the masses, educating and organizing them. But artists, more than any other group, are a pain to organize. There was this uh, conference of uh, Filipino writers and one of their assessments was uh, organizing uh, arrogant writers is really hard. Poets have this very inflated view of themselves. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, one of the major lessons is uh, basically integrating these artist collectives into uh, the mass movement in general So to, to in order to avoid uh, uh, those kinds of tendencies. The fact that this problematic was even raised reveals a different layer in the revolution in the Philippines. Earlier, the comrade mentioned that the new democratic movement is highly inspired by Mao and the Chinese Revolution. The highest stage achieved during the Chinese Revolution was that of the Cultural Revolution. And one of the lessons learned is that you need a lot of different outlets for the masses to unleash their creative energies to help contribute and guide the revolution. The outlet that makes the most sense are mass organizations. And in the Philippines, you have mass organizations for almost every section of society, sometimes multiple. What guides the strategic placement of each mass organization is a class analysis. Because having a whole organization full of factory workers will bring up different problematics than having one full of artists. Uh, I think that the lesson here, uh, if you are only going to recruit uh, mid artists, uh, it's going to be a concentration of uh, petty bourgeois or other higher classes because uh, in general, the workers and the peasants uh, don't engage in art. So the key here is to train them, uh, the workers and the peasants, into, uh, in, into producing art. The only way to combat these PB tendencies is by integrating yourself in mass struggles. This is a continuous process and it's never fully finished. You have to continuously embed yourself in a proletarian outlook by waging mass struggles together with the proletariat. I think that's the key. Uh, no amount of educational discussions would substitute to integrating with the masses with being one of them and uh, participating in their struggles and campaigns. So alright, artists tend to come from the PB or higher classes and have a tendency to be separated from mass movements. So if left to their own devices, they form detached little sects that treat art like some holy grail, separated from the commoners. So any cultural grouping needs to be connected to mass organizations. Okay, understood, understood. But then what exactly is the artist's role? The role of the artist in the revolution is the same as that of any revolutionary to spouse and propagate revolutionary ideas and to organize and mobilize the people towards waging revolution. Uh, it's just that the, our avenue to do it is our art and art production. So if you're a revolutionary doctor, you do revolution by practicing your medicine. It's, it's like that. <laughs>
Artists aren't some special class of people, but merely another section of society which exists and thus has a particular revolutionary role to play. This doesn't mean artists aren't important. After all, having the ability to have people believe in the possibility of a new world is special and should be cherished. Just like how a doctor saving lives through surgery is special and should be cherished. We need to get beyond the mystique of the artist and bring all of us back down to earth. For example, in KMU, uh, which is a workers' organization, uh, not a lot of vegetables uh, or writers or artists uh, joined there. So there was a necessity to train the train trade unionists to write their own songs, uh, paint their own murals. Everyone can make art if they're trained to do so. But this can give rise to a new tension. Doing mass work can be pretty time consuming and the same goes for the production of art. What's the resolution? The integration of the production of art into mass work. The comrades from the ND movement put it quite simply. Uh, as an activist, you put activism in the primary. So everything else that, that is technically not activism uh, has to adjust to your activism. So even if you're a student or a worker, uh, your work or your studies revolve around your activism. I think that's the key. You can always make time when, when you settle that contradiction within yourself. Being an activist comes with many responsibilities. There's practical contributions and then understanding how they fit into a larger theoretical strategy. But aside from abstractions, there's a responsibility to understand yourself as well. What are your strengths and what are your shortcomings? In that sense, hosting educational sessions isn't just important to help spread revolutionary consciousness, but also to gain a deeper understanding of yourself and your own practices. Political economy, for example, is very important in artists from Mao Zedong, art that stands above classes. It's not real, it's lying. So it's very important for artists to be clear in their class stand. We view the Talks at Dayanan Forum as one of our foundational texts. So we refuse to separate art from propaganda. Uh, you can produce propaganda, of course, without doing art per se, but because art has its own peculiarities. Uh, but although art has a purely artistic aspect, you cannot separate that aspect from its political aspect. So that's where the propagandizing comes in. Uh, all art is used as propaganda, not just revolutionary art. Uh, Bourseau art is used as propaganda. Feudal art is propaganda. Uh, we are often criticized for not being proper artists, that we only produce agitprop and not really art. But to us, uh, producing agitprop is a good thing, not a bad thing. That's where we see ourselves in society. We see ourselves as propagandists. According to Alice Guillermo, uh, one of our major, major theories, uh, art is the crystallization of society. Uh, that's, uh, that differs from the common uh, definition that art is the mirror of reality. We, we deny that definition. It's, it's not merely a mirror, it's a crystallization. It, it highlights certain things. Uh, it doesn't just uh, reflect. Art is capable of showing a future that isn't here yet. It has that potential. The point is that if you're seeking to implement wide-scale political change, if you push far enough, you're eventually forced into the realm of philosophy. In combating the bourgeois conception of art for art's sake, there needs to be a proletarian understanding of what art is, which is at once a philosophical and practical intervention. And all this practice and continuous theoretical study is paying off. Mirroring the entire revolution in the Philippines, Bandai Sining is stronger than ever. One of our major successes uh, is the growth we achieved in the past year, uh, that despite the undeclared martial law with veils, which veils itself as COVID-19 response, uh, we were able to reach out to thousands of Filipino youth and Filipino masses. Uh, there were months when hundreds of young artists finished our basic political education program, which includes the study of Philippine society and revolution, uh, Araling Activista or Activist Study, which I think is available now on FLP. <laughs> we, de we demonstrated our strength in marches and mobilization. Uh, there was one time this year that the police were, were so threatened by the Filipino youth artists that they stole our effigy during a protest. 
And despite the curfews, which starts at 8 p.m., uh, mass artists uh, heeded the call of PS and they decorated Manila with protest graffiti uh, in defiance of the militarist presence in our cities. The book mentioned here, Araling Activista or Activist Study Guide, is an important educational tool the ND movement uses, and it's available worldwide through FLP. One of the reasons why it's such an important tool is because it thoroughly covers one of the most important organizational principles, the mass line. I've, I've said earlier that art which stands above class society is lying, uh, cannot do that. Uh, any artwork carries with it the class stand of the artist. So in PS, art production does not manifest from mere imaginations of an idealist artist. Uh, for example, in our paintings, uh, the beginning of the painting is not the first brush stroke. It begins way before that in integration with the masses, in living with them, in being one among them, and in learning from them. Uh, similarly, our paintings do not end in posh galleries where the masses will never see them, but in the communities itself. Uh, on the fences of subdivisions we cannot afford to live in, uh, under foot bridges and in protest marches. It's not just learning from the masses and using the masses as an object. Uh, I think vital also in using the mass line is uh, encouraging the masses to create art themselves. While the use of art within revolution has universal characteristics, it'll take different forms in different places. And with antagonistic contradictions being sharp as they are in the Philippines, encouraging the masses to produce art doesn't mean that they'll make fluffy pieces on their own if they aren't being guided. Large sections of the masses are already combative, and of course their art reflects that. Uh, we tried to do art therapy among Luma children uh, to debrief them from the traumas of war from their homeland. Uh, so it's art therapy. We, we expected them to be chill and uh, relax for the first time. But when, when they submitted their uh, drawings, it's full of uh, aerial bombings, artillery bombings. I mean, in the Philippines, the masses have no choice but to produce added prop. It's all they know. If there's one thing I'll never tire shouting out is for comrades to study the revolution in the Philippines. Just like we as individuals with revolutionary knowledge have a responsibility to spread it to those who don't, the same goes for the comrades who operate in revolutions more advanced than ours. So I asked PS to leave some words of advice for American comrades. We look up to W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, Nina Simone, his Cateron, Guthrie, uh, Phil Ox, because we see value in American protest art and literature. Uh, so we asked our comrades in the Imperial Corps to do the same, as we in the colonized world stand in solidarity with the masses of the capitalist countries. Uh, we also ask you to stand in solidarity with us above hashtags or slogans, but to seriously engage in study with us. I mean, not just study the Philippine art movement, but to study with Filipino artists. After all, we're a living people, not some dead artifact. We're still around. We're still here to be engaged with. So we take from your progressive culture, and in turn, we offer ours to be learned from. You heard it here first, folks. They're living people to be engaged with. So this is a call especially for all artists to reach out to Pandai Sining. Collaborating in art pieces is incredibly important, but what PS considers the most important of all goes well with the theme of this whole video. The best way to support Pandai Sining or the entire Filipino people for that matter is to engage in resolute and militant struggle in your home countries. And that's what Lenin said. Uh, your victories over there create spaces for us here to surmount the aggression of U.S. imperialism, which remains to be our biggest problem to this day. We see the growing movement to stop Asian American hate, so we encourage you to use that platform to also expose American abuses against Asians here in Asia. The Philippines, most Americans forget, is America's first colony. When they came here, they killed almost 10% of our people in a genocidal campaign. I've heard from anecdotes that until today, uh, textbooks still call it the Philippine insurgency. 
and not the Philippine-American War as if we have no agency or national sovereignty. Uh, until today, Asia from the Middle East to Southeast Asia to Japan and Korea is still a region filled with U.S. military bases and we're flooded with American boots year after year. So we also encourage you to support all movements that aim to stop the U.S. government's funding of the genocidal armed forces of the Philippines and the Philippine National Police. We encourage you to join the growing international movement of support for our more, most urgent struggle today, which is to oust Duterte from his office and try him for his crimes against the Philippine people, his crimes against humanity, and punish him and his minions once and for all. Thank you so much to Pandai Sining for taking the time to answer my questions and for this important theoretical intervention. And with that, a special final message in Tagalog. Maraming salamat sa uh, pag-imbita sa Pandai Sining dito sa YouTube channel ni Space Baby. Uh, supportahan natin ang mga kasama mula sa itong bansa at uh, mag-subscribe tayo sa kanyang channel at abangan yung mga, mga susunod pang mga upload. If you enjoyed this video on Pandai Sining, check out some of the music on this channel. Big shout out to all my patrons for their support and thank you for watching. Please leave a comment on what you think the role of art in revolution is. Peace, space, baby, out.